Hey, what's up everybody? Kevin Mendoza here and I just got back from a shoot. Everything's loaded up on the computer already and we're going to go into Premiere Pro and edit the hell out of it. What the hell are you doing? What the hell it look like? I'm, I'm editing. You know it's going to take forever if you edit that way. Oh, and you know of a better way? Step aside. Man, it got dark. Quick. Hello friends, we are here back at it with another tutorial video. Today we're trying to get a little bit faster with editing. If you're watching this video, you probably already know that editing takes forever. Literally, forever. I've actually never submitted a client project because forever is still going on. I'm kidding, of course I've delivered all of my client projects, most of which were delivered in less than 24 hours from the shoot. Now, I'm not touting myself to be the fastest editor in the world, but there are some factors that allow me to edit as fast as I do. How long it takes me to edit anything really just depends on how low maintenance my client is. No, that's wrong. The fuck is it? It really just depends on how much they pay me. That's not it either. The fuck is it? Where did I? It's gotta be somewhere here. It really just comes down to organization and practice. So it really just comes down to organization of your workflow and practice of the already built-in tools within your editing software. So let's go over these. First, organization. Now, before we even get into the editing portion of the equation, I'm going to mention some things that help me pre-edit. Number one, project management. I personally don't like biting off more than I can chew. Regardless of whether or not it's good for business, being overwhelmed with projects is not a goal of mine. I find that it drains my energy a lot faster, it keeps me from spending time with my loved ones, and it significantly decreases my creativity, which prevents me from entering the mental state known as flow. Flow is when you're in the zone, right? Everything is just clicking, you know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and everything just falls in line perfectly and you're your most creative self. This is especially useful for editing because the whole goal of the process is to take pieces of footage and then place them into the timeline in a particular order. The takeaway with project management is to manage your projects so you're not so stressed out. Number two, know what the final result will look like through visualization. Before the project begins, before you even go out on site to start filming, Get it in your brain, a picture of a few scenes of what the final video will look like. By doing this, you'll know what to shoot and how to shoot it. This helps me so much in the editing room. By the time I sit down and start offloading my memory card, I already have an idea of what I should be doing in the timeline, which is way more efficient than having to build the video's context as you go along. Number three, Work in steps and do not deviate. I used to have this bad habit where I would take a clip of footage and place it in the timeline and then grade it and then put the playhead back to the beginning of the timeline and then watch that clip. I would then do the same thing to the next clip, place it on the timeline, grade it, and then place the playhead to the beginning of the video and then play what is now two clips worth of footage just to see if I liked it. Now imagine doing that for a full edit. You're basically watching the video over and over again, only after you add each clip, it's that much longer every time you watch it. Having learned the lesson the hard way, I now work in steps. Step one, get it on the timeline. Just scrub through all of your footage and place the parts that you want onto the timeline. And this could also go for music as well. And that's it, don't do anything else. Just take what you want, dump it into the timeline. Step two, go through your timeline to finalize any cuts for editing to the music, pacing of the story, or just fine tuning those in and out points per clip. Step three, color correct or color grade. This is self-explanatory. And finally, step four, here is where you bring the playhead to the beginning of your edit and then give your edit a final preview to see if there was anything that you missed. If you follow these four steps, your editing productivity will increase significantly even if you don't know editing hacks or keyboard shortcuts. Which brings me to my next point. This next part is going to require a lot of practice, but once you have it down, 
you'll be flying through edits and delivering projects to clients where they'll be asking, how you do that? And of course, I'm talking about keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are exactly what they sound like. You hit a single key on the keyboard and it will accomplish for you a single task or series of tasks that would otherwise require you to use your mouse, find the tool that you want, click it, place it wherever you want, tweak any effects, and that's just a bunch of seconds wasted. Now I know a few seconds may not sound like a lot, but when you consider how many clips are in a sequence and how many tasks you'll be performing repeatedly over and over again for each clip, those seconds add up big time. Now I'm not going to go through all the keyboard shortcuts. You could do that on your own time. There are plenty of tutorials out there, but I will share with you some that I use every single day. For now, don't worry about the placement of these shortcuts. You could always customize them later. Okay, here we go. Spacebar plays or pauses the timeline. Add edit places a cut wherever the playhead is. Clear slash delete, it just removes whatever's highlighted, be it a single clip or a series of clips. Ripple trim previous edit to playhead will trim off everything to the left of that clip. Ripple trim next edit to playhead will trim off everything to the right of that clip. Add slash remove video keyframes and add slash remove audio keyframes. This is really helpful if you don't want to go into the effects control panel and then manually add keyframes in there. You could just stay on the timeline and add your keyframes there by hitting the keyboard shortcut and it will add your keyframes wherever the playhead is. Zoom in and zoom out shortcuts allow you to zoom in on the timeline if you want to get up close and fine tune anything. Zoom out will just give you a broader image of what you're working with. So that's the video, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. If you did, don't be shy to show me some love and hit that like button down below. If you wanna see more tutorials just like this, I highly suggest you subscribe. I will be coming out with some more videos. This is Kevin Mendoza, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one, peace.